Disregarding draw and search effects, an effect that allows you to rip a card from your opponent's hand has historically been one of the best and most detrimental types of effect in the game. These effects are often able to decide upon activation who will be winning that given duel, and the cards that carry these effects are among the OGs that have spent the longest amount of time on the Forbidden and Limited list. While I'd like to watch the world burn and say that these cards can just come off the ban list to see how quickly players will exit the game en masse, I've instead decided that these cards are due for a retrain. Not that they necessarily need them in my opinion, because these cards have really fallen out of favor. With how nearly every archetype and even generic cards in recent times that make their way off the production line have means of searching to maintain card advantage and or retrieving cards from the graveyard in some way, shape, or form. But new players need to experience the devastation of their precious cards being stripped away from them. Better draw the out. So today I'll be proposing retrain ideas for four infamous and currently banned cards. For all my veteran players out there, you might want to sit this one out, as I won't be held responsible for any post-traumatic episodes. Let's hurt some feelings. The Forceful Sentry allowed you to return a card of your choice in your opponent's hand to their deck. On the surface, that doesn't really sound all that bad, because even my casual Magnet Warrior deck has the means to retrieve the return card in the following turn. Aside from potentially ducking your opponent's hand traps, the real problem comes with gaining the knowledge of your opponent's entire hand. What are you looking at? My eyes are up here, pal. How can we fix that? The Assertive Sentry. Not inserted. And this retrain is another normal spell card. Select and see one card in your opponent's hand. You can place that card on either the top or bottom of your opponent's deck. They say knowledge is power, but I didn't do all that well in school, so we're capping it. Until the end phase, you cannot control cards on your side of the field that exceeds the number of cards in your opponent's hand. Full stop. Notice the lack of a hard once per turn. I don't feel that it's needed. If you open three going first and can stand to your opponent with an end board of only two cards, having only two cards to make it happen, Go ahead and play that game. But when your opponent is able to search back all of the cards you return to their deck and then some, don't come crying to me or your mother, because we're both very busy. Next up on the chopping block is Confiscation, which in essence has the same ability as the Forceful Sentry in terms of card advantage, negligible life point cost, and discarding a card from your opponent's hand. Considering that in today's Thunderdome of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh, a card in your graveyard might as well be in your hand or on your field, a discard has become less and less appealing when you consider that you're more often helping your opponent beat the brakes off of you. It's not a very smart decision. Yet again, the power comes in the hand knowledge on your opponent and being able to more strategically plan your moves. Let's dumb it down. Expropriation. See Konami I too can use fancy words in my card names. Because life points don't matter, you're going to pay half of your life points to activate this card. And afterwards, we're going to copy the effect that I gave the Sentry Retrain, but instead of placing the card in the deck, that card is banished face up. We're bringing it back old school. I feel that banishing the card face down reinvigorates the argument that it would be broken. It's not. Your opponent still has the ability to recover that banished card, and if they can't, well that's more on them now, isn't it? Although I am inclined to add a hard once per turn clause to this retrain. I'm not a monster. The card I'm sure everyone was waiting for because it's often public enemy number one in the conversation of why certain cards can never come off the ban list, Delinquent Duo. Funny enough, this has become the weakest of these three cards by today's standards. You don't even get to look at your opponent's hand. What a ripoff. 20 years is a long time to spend on the ban list, and in that time, the parents of this troublesome pair regain custody of their once unknown third child, which leads me to believe that this mother and father are fans of Drake. That brings us to Delinquent Trio, a quick play spell card. Oh no, you can only activate this card if you have less cards in your hand than your opponent. Have your life points for every card discarded by this card's effect. Your opponent discards up to two cards from their hand, then, you can discard one card from your hand, and your opponent discards one card of the same type, monster, spell, or trap, from their hand. And the obligatory hard once per turn nerf before I send a GOAT format player into cardiac arrest. We've really upped the ante with this one. Tell me how much life points don't matter when you've dropped yourself down to 1000 or 500 on turn 1. And if you can survive past that, honestly good for you. Finally, our sole trap card on today's roster is Trap Dust Shoot. My first order of business is to retrain that god-awful name. But what does it do? 
Well, if your opponent has four or more cards in their hand, in other words, why you never go second, you get the forceful sentry effect, but specifically for a monster in your opponent's hand. So this card has absolutely no place on the ban list these days because this card is now all but useless. But my retrain will be Trap Spike Shoot. I didn't say we were making the name better. Nonetheless, the hard once per turn type of normal trap card. This card can only be activated if your opponent has six or more cards in their hand. In other words, unless you're playing against Exodia, you better be going first, and even then, it's not a guarantee. Your opponent reveals three monster cards in their hand. Select one and return that card to the top of its owner's deck. But what if my opponent doesn't have three monsters in their hand to reveal? Have I just wasted the activation? Brother, you wasted deck space playing this card, but I've got you covered. If your opponent cannot reveal three monster cards, look at their hand, select and return one card in it to the bottom of the owner's deck. Before you burn me at the stake, please remember how improbable getting that second effect off actually is unless you're playing against some nonsense anti-meta back row heavy deck. And even in that instance, it's still far less likely than us getting GTA 6. But that's going to wrap up today's discussion guys, let me know your thoughts. Do these retrains do their job in recapturing the power of the banned originals while still being balanced enough for the modern game, or are they completely unplayable now? Drop a comment down below, and if you could make a retrain for a currently banned card, what might that look like? If you liked the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, as always guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV, signing off.